So hello everyone, thank you for joining this um, by section today. I'm Vicky Zhang, I'm Senior Research Audiologist working at National Christie Laboratories. Um, it's my pleasure to talk about our recent project, uh, which my colleagues and I did recently uh, to explore how well can people understand speech via video conferencing platform. And I believe during the COVID pandemic, we have realized the benefits of using Zoom, uh, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, and etc. It saves a lot of time for traveling, right? And, and, it, and it's very quick and easy uh, for us to scheduling our meetings and attending virtual conferences or workshops like today. And uh, um, it increased um, efficiency to bring remote workers together and keep networking. Um, I think the communication via the video conferencing has now become very common and important in our daily life. <clears throat> Excuse me, <clears throat> I'm catching a cold recently. Um, for no more heroes, we uh, seems have already got used to this modern way of communication and probably would rather work with this flexible way, right? And for most of the times, uh, we can we think that we can communicate well with people in the video course, although you may feel very tired after the whole days of online meetings. But how about people with hearing loss? How well they can communicate via the online platform? Do they have the, um, the listening problems when communicating with people online? And do they need additional helps while doing the video course? In this soundbite, um, I will address three learning uh, objectives to see how well people with and without hearing loss understand speech, both in person and via a video conferencing platform, and to understand people's level of acceptability of using video conferencing based audiology called speech, um, speech assessment and also to explore a question from uh, hearing health professionals that um, can speech tests be conducted reliably using video calls. Okay, so in audiology field, we have known that teleaudiology uh, offers a range of benefits for clients and audiologists, um, mainly for uh, conducting video consult consultations, uh, this type of non-diagnostic uh, services or using remote app to help with adjusting hearing aids. But as far as I know, there are currently no um, validated tools for assessing speech communication outcomes in the context of a video call. So the key aims of this pilot study were to use existing materials and now to develop an, uh, an assessment battery for use with video conferencing platforms. And we'd like to explore how video calls impact on the ability to understand speech and follow conversations for people with and without hearing loss and whether hearing aids can improve the, the experience for people with hearing loss when communicating um, in the video conferencing platform. The hypothesis uh, were uh, first thing um, people with hearing loss may communicate less effectively or spend more effort communicating via the VC platform compared to the normal hearers. And hearing aids may improve the um, performance of people with hearing loss when communicating via the uh, VC platform. And people with normal hearing will have good test retest reliability of the speech communication performance in the video course. And lastly, uh, part uh, participants will show a high degree of accessibility of VC-based audiology core assessments. We recruited 32 adults. Half of them were normal hearers and the other half were hearing aids users. All the normal hearing group of people had passed hearing tests and no reported the hearing difficulties in daily life. And all the hearing Australia's, uh, sorry, the hearing aids users um, uh, had now to moderate hearing loss in their better ear. And all the participants have um, so, so, uh, superior English level. The assessment materials um, that we used include uh, standardized audiological assessment tools, such as 
BKB-like sentences um, list in quiet and noise conditions. Um, this is to evaluate speech perception performance. And the now dynamic conversation test, the now DCT test, this is to evaluate speech comprehension performance. And we also used self-reported questionnaires to capture uh, participants' listening difficulties and effort, uh, mental workload, uh, satisfaction of sound quality, and overall rating on uh, acceptability of VC-based um, audiological administration method. Um, just to give you a bit of background on the testings for those who may not familiar with these assessments, for the speech perception task in quiet, we present 16 sentences via a loudspeaker in front of the participants and let them to repeat back as much of um, each sentence as possible and then calculate the percentage correct of the target words in each test list. And in the noise condition, the target speech sentences and uh, competing bubble noise are also presented from the same loudspeaker and the level of the speech and bubble noise are varied according to whether a participant could repeat more than half of the keywords in the sentence correctly. And we use an adaptive procedure to measure the signal to noise ratios um, in dB to represent people's speech uh, reception threshold for 50% correct. For the speech comprehension task, the now DCT task, participants listen to two conversation passages in bubble noise with a fixed 9 dB signal to match ratio. And they need to answer some comprehension questions after each passage. For study design, each participant was listed in face-to-face -face and via video conferencing platform during one appointment and now booth and the participants were allocated remotely to either conduct face-to-face -face or a video conference condition first to balance the impact of practice effect. In the VC condition, the Domo hearing group were tested twice to investigate the test retest reliability of the, of the assessments via the video conferencing platform. And the participants with hearing loss also completed the test twice, but with and without wearing hearing aids so that we can investigate the impact of hearing devices on their performances. For each testing condition, we conduct one BKB sentence list in quiet and two list in noise, uh, two passages of the now DCT test in noise, and then ask participants to complete a questionnaire. This diagram shows the um, experiment set up in the face-to-face -face and uh, video conferencing sessions. The face-to-face -face assessment were conducted with both the participant and the researcher in the same room, and the speech materials were presented directly uh, from a loudspeaker connected to a, a testing laptop. This is the same as a typical laboratory experiment. In the video conference, um, uh, assessment, the participants sat in the same room as in the face-to-face -face condition, and the researcher sat in an adjacent quiet room. Uh, video conference calls are established between two testing laptops, and the test materials include um, uh, the speech and noise were sent over via the uh, Zoom video platform, and we presented the speech and noise from the same loudspeaker. Now let's have a look how well people with and without hearing loss understand speech, both in person and via the video conference platform. Let's have a look at the speech perception performance first. In quiet condition, the top table show that for normal hearing group, the BKB quiet scores showed um, 100% correct across all three conditions. For normal hearing group, there are no significant difference on the scores um, between the face-to-face -face and VC condition, which is the aided condition. They were both pretty high, above 99% correct. And there were also no significant difference between the normal hearing group and hearing paired group. However, the results in the VC2, which is the unaided condition, show significant worse uh, than the face-to-face -face 
and the aided condition. This makes sense, right? Um, but from another perspective, this suggests that the BKB quiet task was sensitive to the benefits of hearing aids when tested in video conferencing platform. For BKB in noise test, as I mentioned earlier, we used adaptive rule to measure the signal to noise ratio in dB at the 50% correct of speech reception threshold level. And and this figure um, represents the means and 95% confidence level of the signal to noise ratio in the three testing conditions. On, on the y axis, um, the lower uh, signal to noise ratio means the better speech perception score in noise. Okay, And the fielded black circle and open square uh, represents the results for normal hearing and hearing group, um, uh, hearing impaired group respectively. For both groups of people, on average, participants showed significantly lower signal to noise ratio, which is um, a better score, um, the BKB, perform BKB noise performance in the face to face condition, huh? compared to the two VC conditions. And when we compare the, um, the scores, the, the SRT scores in the two VC conditions for normal hearers, there are no significant difference on their performance. However, the hearing impaired group showed significantly better score when people are um, communicating well with, with uh, um, hearing aids, the VC condition, a uh, VC1 condition, compared to no hearing aids condition, the VC2 condition. When we come, sorry. When we compare the results in VC1 condition, we can see that in uh, with the hearing aids on, uh, even with um, even for people with hearing aids on, their speech perception score was still poor than the normal hearers. How about the speech comprehension performance? Similar to the speech perception noise results, this figure indicates the means and 95% confidence level of the average DCT percentage scores from uh, two passages. So on the y-axis, the higher score, the better. For people with normal hear hearing, the DCT scores were similar, um, which were all above 85%, regardless of the face-to-face -face and VC conditions. And there were no significant difference on their performance between the um, two, VC uh, two video conference conditions. The hearing impaired group shows significantly worse scores for the two VC conditions compared to in person. Um, and there was significant difference between the aided and unaided uh, conditions when communicating via the VC platform. Also, we can see um, in the VC condition, again, even when people wear hearing aids, their speech comprehension scores were still poor, worse than the normal hearers. If you still remembered, one of the hypotheses was to see if people with normal hearing would show a good test-retest reliability of the speech performance via the VC platform. To do that, uh, we also conducted uh, blind outline plots to evaluate the testing agreement between the two um, video conferencing conditions. In the bland um, Upman plot, an individual's average score on a signal to noise ratio or DCT measure, which is the um, X uh, axis, uh, is plotted against their different scores on the measure, which is the Y axis. And on a bland uh, Upman plot, the solid line in the middle represent the average differences, which is the bias, and the dashed lines there, or there represents the upper and the lower 95% limits of agreement. We can see that um, the BKB uh, or the DCT measures shows relatively symmetry in points above and uh, below, uh, above or below um, the zero and the mean uh, bias value on the plots were close to zero for both tasks. This indicates that participants didn't perform better or worse in a particular condition, or in another word, which means that normal 
here participants showed very good test, re test reliability via the video conferencing platform there. Um, in addition to this, um, the comparison of the two VC conditions also suggests that we can detect changes as small as the step size of 2 dB. So the VC condition hasn't compromised the sensitivity of the test. Okay, so far we have looked at people's speech communication performance in face-to-face -face and video uh, conferencing-based administrations by using the standardized audiological measurements. Now have a look. Let's have a look um, how people feel the ease of uh, communication for both in, re, uh, in person and via video conferencing platform based on their self-reported responses. Now let's have a look at people's listening effort. Um, the term listening effort is used to describe the mental uh, workload or energy um, a listener may be required to allocate cognitive resources when trying to extract meaning from a single a speech signal. Um, and recently, listening effort has been considered as an important outcome measure. And it can be measured in different ways, such as using subjective tools, electrophysiological tools, or with two task paradigms. And in this study, we asked the participants, we, we used the um, self, uh, um, self-reported questionnaire and we asked the participants to give two ratings uh, based on uh, first thing uh, first one is the seven point scale question to evaluate how much effort it took for them to listen to the passages and the second uh, question is a uh, 10 point scale question on how much effort did they use to follow the conversations and the ratings goes from no effort very little to uh, extremely effort. For normal hearing group, um, the black bars, um, it shows um, similar ratings on the two listening efforts questions across the listening conditions. And for people with hearing loss, we can see that they spend uh, more listening effort when communicating uh, via the video conferencing platform compared to the face-to-face uh, -face, um, uh, condition. And they expanded much more listening effort there or there um, in the VC2 condition when following conversations without wearing hearing aids. And how about people's self-reported responses on mental workload? We use NASA Task Load Index TRX to subjectively assess people's perceived cognitive workload while they are performing a task. It raised self uh, performance across six dimensions, including mental demand, uh, physical demand, um, temporal demand, effort, performance, and frustration level. And the ratings goes from very low to very high to determine uh, an overall workload ratings in each dimension. The results showed that in face to face condition, people wearing hearing aids reported that they expanded more mental load, workload compared to normal hearing people. And when communicating via a VC platform, people wearing hearing aids also expanded more effort in three mental, um, mental, uh, uh, mental load dimensions compared to the normal hearing group. And when comparing hearing impaired groups rating with and without hearing aid, wearing hearing aids, we found people reported higher workload levels on physical demand, effort, and frustration level when they commit, uh, when they complete uh, accomplishing the task. However, for normal hearing people, self-reported responses showed similar ratings on mental workload across all three um, testing conditions. When we ask the participants to rate their overall ses, um, satisfaction of the testing sessions with audiologists and people's ratings on how easy they thought to understand the task um, instruction, we found that testing condition didn't affect the self ratings on overall satisfaction. And the overall acceptability ratings uh, of the easy needs indicate that people were satisfied with both face to face and um, video conferencing conditions. At the end of the appointment, we also asked two questions on uh, which testing section did you like better? 
and how likely would you be to conduct assessments via video conferencing in the future? And the majority of the respondents from the normal hearing group are reported no preference for a particular condition. However, more people wearing hearing aids, they still would prefer face to face if possible. And both groups of people showed a high degree of acceptability of VC based audiological assessment in the future. So some take home messages for our first hypothesis. Our funding is yes. When communicating via video conferencing platforms, um, people with hearing loss communicated less effectively on the speech perception in noise and speech comprehension in noise test compared to the normal hearing people. And for normal hearing group, listening efforts appears to be similar when communicating um, regardless of the um, in the face to face or video conferencing conditions, whereas um, people with hearing impaired expand more listening effort and the mental workload when communicating in video calls. And um, the second hypothesis is to explore whether hearing aids would improve the performance for hearing aids users when communicating via video calls. And the answer is yes. Hearing aids did improve the performance of people with hearing loss. However, they didn't restore speech understanding and comprehension to the same level as normal hearing, or indeed to how they performed in face to face. So there is a great need to develop and to or to um, evaluate some novel technologies to assist people with hearing impaired in communicating more effectively in video calls. It will be very exciting to conduct more research to improve the lives of people with hearing loss in um, in in uh, Australia and also around the world. And thirdly, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, there are currently no validated tools for assessing speech communication outcomes in the context of a video course. We don't know how feasible is this to use the standardized audiological assessment tool via the VC platform. Well, um, from our findings, we've observed some good test retest reliability in normal hearing group for the assessments. Uh, that delivered via the VC platform. And this is suggests that it uh, should be possible to use the repeated testing via the VC platform, such as to detect device changes over time or um, in response to a new technology. <clears throat> and we also found both the speech perception in noise and speech comprehension tasks uh, appear to be sensitive enough to distinguish hearing aids uh, hearing impaired people's performance with and without using hearing aids when communicating in video calls. So this is um, this suggests that it may be sensitive to detect the effects of um, other interventions that designed to improve uh, people's communication uh, online. And, and the fourth research question is to see whether people would accept the VC based audiological assessment. And well, although um, people with hearing loss showed uh, poorer speech testing scores and higher listening efforts in video calls compared to the face to face, the overall satisfaction and acceptability ratings indicate that both hearing impaired group and normal hearing group were satisfied with both testing conditions with audiologists. And in general, participants showed a high degree of assess, uh, acceptability of VC based audiological assessments. So this suggests that administrating audiological assessment via video conference holds potential in clinical practice. And we hope to improve the current teleaudiology service so that um, it can be delivered as the same high quality as the hearing care services provided in person. So thanks for listening, and I also like to thank for my colleagues. Uh, I hope this section gave you some glances on how well can people understand speech via video conferencing platform. If you have any questions, please contact me. Thank you. Mm -hmm.